I'm gonna I'm gonna record in the cloud. Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Francie Woodford. I um, used to teach with these lovely colleagues, uh, Leslie Kirchner Morris and Leah Joanna Labov, along with my good friend Mac Khan and uh, Leslie Greenlee. And I wanted to introduce um, the two speakers today. My favorite thing about teaching is the professor tutor relationship. Um, and when I teach, I like to teach together one-on-one. -on -one. It's the best way to teach. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more about the magic of this relationship that a professor can have with a tutor and collaborating, especially because they're gonna talk about, I think, Le Petit Prince, which is one of my favorite books. Um, so I'm looking forward to being inspired and thank you so much for um, presenting today. Thank you, Francie. That was a beautiful introduction. We really appreciate it. So the title of our presentation, as you can see, is The Magic of the Professor-Tutor Collaboration. We have two presenters, uh, Professor LaBeouf and myself. And uh, we will introduce ourselves in a moment. And thank you for coming. And we will send the PowerPoint. So don't feel like you have to sit there and take uh, assiduous notes or copious notes because we will send the PowerPoint to you upon request. Great. And our email addresses are there. So now we say welcome. We say welcome in many, many languages. Uh, we, we are ESL teachers and we are international people. So we like to have many languages and we would also like to welcome our friends from the University of Madagascar who are with us today. Professor Mac Khan's students, we're so happy you're with us. Thank you for coming. So there's a famous saying in English, two heads are better than one and that certainly applies for collaboration. So here you see two heads. So we have Leslie's head and my head and we worked very hard for a semester collaborating together and planning our lessons and making our lessons better because two people were working on them. So I am Professor Joanna LeBeau. I teach at the Community College of Philadelphia in the English department in the ESL unit. Unit is like a program and I have taught every class, listening and speaking and reading and writing. And I love to teach immigrant students who come to the United States to improve their reading and writing skills. Thank you, uh, Professor LeBeau. And I am Leslie Kirshner Morris, and I've been teaching at the Community College of Philadelphia for about five years, loving every minute of it. And um, I think the thing that makes my perspective maybe a little bit different than the others is that I taught first grade for 10 years in a bilingual program, as well as middle school and high school. And I have supervised at the central office level, uh, pre-K through 12. So I understand about rostering and graduation credits mm -hmm. and the needs of um, students who are reluctant readers and struggling writers and I think it helps me a lot in my work. Uh, one thing that I wanted to share with you is that in order for Professor LaBeouf and myself to work together efficiently and effectively, we share similar core beliefs. Now, why am I pointing to my heart? Because when your heart and your head are aligned, you think similarly and you start to plan similarly. So this wheel is actually called the six principles for exemplary teachers of English learners, whether they're in the United States or overseas. And why do we need these principles? Because the mission of our mother TESOL organization <clears throat> is that we deliver high quality lessons around the world. And as the number of English learners soars, a common understanding of our pedagogy and effective instructional assessment design is very important. 
in some settings, teachers need more preparation to effectively educate English learners. And when we fully implement these six principles, we are guaranteeing that our students will be successful. So these six principles provide us with the knowledge to make informed decisions about our students. They help us respect, affirm, and promote students' home languages. This is not a subtractive model that we believe in, it's additive. We respect home languages and cultural knowledge and experiences as resources. The fancy name for that is called funds of knowledge, a fund of knowledge. So each student comes with their own fund of knowledge from their country. We celebrate multilingualism and diversity, and we support policies that promote individual language rights and multilingual education. And we guide students to be global citizens. So let's just very quickly look at principle number one, know your learners. So you will all be, or already are, an exemplary teacher. What makes you an exemplary teacher? You want to know your learners. You want to know a little bit about their families, their language, their culture, and educational backgrounds to engage them in a class and prepare and deliver the lessons effectively. <clears throat> Excuse me. Principle number two is right here in the green bubble where, where it says create conditions for language learning. This is so important, you guys. Why? Because when you're an exemplary teacher, you create a classroom culture so students feel comfortable. They can experiment with language. They make decisions regarding the physical environment. Teachers make decisions first about what specific materials and social integration of students to promote language learning. So let's now look at principle number three in the orange bubble, design high quality language lessons. What does that mean? Exemplary teachers like you plan lessons that are meaningful for students and promote language and content learning. These lessons evolve from language and content learning objectives. So like Francie said in her presentation about backward design, you have to have a map and sometimes you plan backwards from that map to figure out where you want your students to be. So teachers provide input through varied techniques and modalities. So Dr. LaBeouf and I are always trying to figure out what techniques will keep students engaged and active, up and walking around, looking at the material, processing it linguistically in reading and writing, listening and speaking. So even though we're teaching a reading writing class, we're always integrating listening, speaking, reading and writing. We're using gestures. We're using visuals, lots of, lots of pictures. We're using learning strategies. We're using embedded definitions. We're demonstrating. We're using um, Google support and bilingual glossaries to make information accessible and comprehensible. And we're always asking students to give us their thoughts on the material. Now let's move to number four. I'm spending a lot of time on this slide because I think it's important. We adapt lesson delivery as needed. What does that mean? You as exemplary teachers continually assess as we do, as you teach. You're observing, you're reflecting on your learners' responses to determine if your students are reaching their lesson objectives. Are they giving you a one word response, a phrase, a sentence, or are they responding to you at the message level? You're, we're always thinking we need more output and we want it to amplify what they say and make it more complex, okay? So we might adjust the way we talk, we might adjust the task, we might adjust the materials according to the learner response. Moving, Moving on, on to, to number, number five, five, monitor and assess language development. Because our students learn at different rates, we as exemplary teachers monitor and assess their language development to advance their learning efficiently and measure language growth. 
we design a variety of assessments to evaluate student learning and inform their instruction. So we're looking at the errors to give feedback, but we also want to make sure we're not banging them over the head about every little error. We want to make sure that the errors that we're correcting are the ones that are going to give them the best feedback so that they can monitor their own progress and make changes on their own. We record our observations and we use notes, checklists, and rubrics. Okay. And finally, number six, we engage and collaborate within a community of practice. So Professor LaBeouf and I are collaborating with Professor Kahn. We're, we're collaborating with Professor Woodford, with Professor Greenlee. We're not doing this work in isolation. We collaborate with others in our profession, in our department, to get the best support for our learners. And we meet with colleagues to co-plan and share our expertise about how second language or third language development is happening in our students, as well as the techniques for the students that we're working with at different levels of proficiency. Wow, thank you for that wonderful explanation of the six, um, six principles for disciplinary teaching of English learners. And this is from the TESOL organization. So right, and, and, and also, I'm sorry to interrupt, but here's the book. It's called The Six Principles for Exemplary Teaching of English Language Learners, and it's put out by TESOL Press. Very important to know. So now I would like to talk about collaboration and the sixth pillar. So here, you know, at the Community College of Philadelphia, where Dr. Kirsten Morris and I both work, they now have a sixth pillar. Another word for pillar could be belief or plan. So they have a sixth plan. And that involves diversity of students, equity, you could say fairness, and inclusion of all types of students. So this is a new wonderful plan or belief or pillar that the college now has. So we asked the question that we're asking, number one, how do you get to know your students? And how do we encourage our students to be successful and engaged? And one way we did that is to work together to collaborate. And I got to know my students better after talking with Dr. Krishna Morris and then she, and vice versa. So we encourage our students to be successful and engaged in everything we did. So um, this presentation, as you can tell, is a deep dive. Uh, we really are thinking so much about how we're planning and what materials to use and how the students are progressing. But we're not saying that you necessarily have to plan this way. We're just saying that this is what we did last semester and that um, Professor Morris, myself, I'm taking this model now and I'm working with two other professors in a similar way so that I know week by week what they would like me to cover and how they would like me to address their students where there may be bumps in the road or where we may want to speed up a little bit. Okay, so here's an overview of our presentation today. We wanna to talk about our learning goals and objectives for everybody. We want to describe the traditional learning lab model and talk about the collaborative process and planning that we did together. There's a case study that we'll talk about of a particular student who, who progressed due to our planning together. And then the co individual contributions of the professor and the tutor to our collaboration. And at the end, we would like to have any questions you have. We love answering questions. We want to have a lot of discussion. And if, you, if we can share, if you can think, please, about how you collaborated with someone when you were teaching or learning or in any way, we would love to hear your thoughts and have a wonderful discussion. OK, so here are our learning goals. It's important, we believe, to learn the benefits of a new type of collaboration. We found so many benefits from working together. 
So we would like to talk about that and have you learn about that. Understand the roles of collaborative planning and how they improve the students' English reading and writing ability. And it could be listening and speaking, it could be anything. And we wanna increase your awareness of how to plan collaboratively. Because many times in the field of teaching English to speakers of other languages, especially at the college level, teachers are working by themselves. And that's sort of like been the tradition, but we work together and we really benefited a lot and the students benefited so much. So on the bottom right, there's a picture of Plato, the Greek philosopher who said, necessity is the mother of invention. That's a very famous quote. So how does that apply to us? Well, there are many things that we needed to create together in order to improve our students' learning, a bit, learning. and we put that in our lesson plan. So we, we did whatever we needed to do to uh, increase the students' ability to learn to read and write English. Thank you, Professor LaBeouf. And now I'd like to take you to the learning lab. You're, you'll probably look at this and say, wow, it's so beautiful. And you're right. It was a long time in coming, this learning lab where I work with Professor LaBeouf students. But this actually is just the entrance. Okay, so before they even walk in, the stairway on the left takes them to a coffee shop, uh, straight back or brand new state-of-the-art restrooms. And right behind this pole here is a huge room that have, it has individual computers, computer stations and sofas and beautiful bright blue lime green sofas and love seats where I can, uh, or Leslie Greenlee can do um, group tutoring in small groups, three or four students. But they, I actually teach in a little classroom that looks like glass all around. And that's where I teach Professor LaBeouf's students. So imagine like a glass castle. They're sitting in a plexiglass room at tables for six. And that is where they're doing the work. And on these walls here in the classroom, I can actually take a pin or some tape and I can put posters up and the students can walk around and they can do their work there or just write in a notebook. So this is what the learning commons look like. And the director is Anna Sexis and she's the assistant professor and chair of the learning lab. So as I said, this was a lot of money in coming. Uh, it actually takes place in two or three buildings and I call it Buckingham Palace because it's so clean and so beautiful and so new and gives everyone a very uplifting feeling. So now let me tell you about the philosophy of the Learning Lab. If you were a student attending the Learning Lab classes, what would you gain from that? Well, the philosophy of the Learning Lab is that every student is like a flower and that every student not only is learning language, but they're learning how to learn. So how does one learn in another language? How does one learn content? How does one learn vocabulary? How does one learn the grammar of the language when you're in a new academic area? The philosophy of the lab is that students, when students get the strategies that they need and the support that they need, that they will bloom they will flower and they will be able to succeed in whatever their professional endeavor is, whether they're taking healthcare or business or teaching or um, medicine, whatever they're in, we will give them the strategies and the confidence to be successful. So the traditional role of the professor tutor relationship would be simply that um, I would be able to access the course as the tutor and the professor would do her own teaching. And there might be some conversation in between. However, we wanted to expand the traditional role and we wanted to be able to plan more diligently 
and more carefully according to the six principles. Okay, so this is our wonderful book that we, are, we used last semester, and I'm using it this semester, The Little Prince. And the students love it, and I love it. It's a very short book, but there's a lot of philosophy in it about this little boy who lives on this planet and travels to other planets and comes to Earth and makes a friend and understands what is important in life and learns from a fox who is actually his teacher that what is essential in life is invisible. And it's all about his, his travels on, on planet Earth and what happens with him because he left, he left his planet because his Rose, who was his friend, uh, lied to him and broke his trust. And at the end, he comes back to his planet, returns back, and meets the rose again. This is what we think could happen at the end. So this is a wonderful book. I recommend it. It is translated into 300 languages. And if you speak French, then you can read the book in the original language. So it's a wonderful book. And we used this book last semester when we collaborated together. So what are the steps for collaboration? For, for our friends in Madagascar, we use a learning management system called Canvas. And what happens is the professor just lets me in as the tutor to that Canvas course, to the learning management course. And I can see all the assignments that he or she or they are teaching. And then we determine the amount of time that we want to spend in the collaboration. Do we want to meet once a week, twice a month, or once a month? And then we plan that course. For us, for Professor LaBeouf and myself, our goal was to meet weekly because we only have 15 weeks. We have to make it happen. Chop, 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 chick, chop. So we bring the materials that we want to share in the meeting, and then we share our thoughts and experience about student progress in a very professional manner using professional language, always looking at the most at the bright side of what the students can do instead of a deficit model, because that is best practice when you're looking at multilingual learners. Build on their strengths. Don't worry so much about what they can't do, but what they can do. I love that. So we have here two paradigms, or you could say models, or you could say think, ways of thinking for collaboration. The first one is the traditional way that has always been the case. And then the second way, experimental, is our way, what we did. So let's talk about them a little bit. On the left, it says traditional paradigm, traditional way of thinking about collaboration. So here, the tutor reaches out to the teacher for the course syllabus, sends an email and says, you know, please send me the course syllable, syllabus and finds out about the ongoing needs of the students. So that's minimum is please give me your syllabus professor and tell me about the students. There's little sharing between the professor and the tutor and there's unscheduled communication. So there's no meeting every week it could be maybe an email once every four months or four weeks, possibly. On the right, we see the complete opposite. And we call that experimental paradigm because it's something we did last semester that we created, which now Professor Krishna Morris is using with two other professors. In this situation, the tutor and the professor meet every two weeks online. It could even be online, you know, once a week and it could be face-to-face, -face, but then they're meeting on a regular basis to plan the syllabus and assess the student progress. It's really important to, or to, to plan every lesson. That's what we, and then it's important to assess student progress. So how do you think this student is doing? We could ask each other. And then each person has a different perspective and then we learn from each other. 
we share observations about student progress. That's really important because, you know, when I'm teaching the class, I have my, my thoughts, but then when I talked to Professor Kirshner Morris, she gave me her thoughts and it really deepened my understanding and my thoughts, I believe, deepened her understanding about how the student progress and what we needed to do to improve the student's understanding of the book and also how to write essays and homeworks about the book. And then on the right, on the bottom, it says systemic and weekly plan for communication of the course learning objectives. So at the Community College of Philadelphia, every course has objectives of what we, what we, we the professor and the school, the college, want the students to learn. Of course, we have objectives. We have another word you could say for objective could be a goal. What do we want the students to learn? So systemic would be we have a system and we have a weekly plan for communicating how we're going to reach or achieve the goals or objectives that we, that we set out for our students for the course and then the individual student needs. So you can see the two paradigms or the two ways of thinking or the two plans are very, very different. The major difference is that, one major difference is that with the traditional paradigm, the tutor is not involved as much in the planning of the class and knows less about what is happening uh, with the students. Um, on the right side, there's a lot of planning between the tutor and the professor, which really helps the students. Okay, so here are the two models of collaboration. So, you know, as Professor Krishna Morris said earlier, if, you know, professor, if a professor and tutor don't have, you know, as much time as we did or to meet every week, that's okay. They don't have to meet as much. So we have created two models about using, about the, the way that we create, you know, collaborated together in our experimental paradigm. So model A, that's what we did, but we can, I'll talk about model B too. So model A is we met weekly in person or, vir or virtually, we did, we did both. We were always meeting every week talking, talking, talking about the class. Okay, number one, we planned our lessons weekly. If we had met twice, you know, once every two weeks, it would, our planning would not have been as effective. And both of us were completely committed and dedicated to helping our students. So we decided we wanted to meet once a week. Two, we shared and we created updated materials based on our students' needs and based on our lesson plans. So when we created and worked on our lesson plans together, we realized we had to create more materials for our lessons. Number three is share data regarding student assignments. So my students would write assignments when I would show them to the tutor, Professor Kirsten Morris. And likewise, in her tutoring sessions, the students would write assignments and she would show them to me. So I really got to know how well or how much help the students needed with their writing. Number four is extremely important. We reflected upon, we thought upon deeply our lesson plans and we revised them together. So in the traditional model, the professor writes his or her lesson plans and then, then create, does the lesson. But we worked together and we worked on the lesson plan. We, we, we thought about them and then we, we, we wrote it again and again and again based on what we thought would best, best be helpful for the students. Number five is discuss student progress. We were always discussing student progress in um, virtually online or when we met together face to face always thinking and always talking about, oh, this student or that student or this student. 
So that's what we did. It was very intense and it worked extremely well. However, we do recognize not everybody has the time to do this. So if you don't have enough this time, you can do model B, which basically means meet less frequently. So what does that mean? Number one, possibly you could plan your lessons every two weeks. That could work. It would not be as effective, but it could work. Two, share material from our text or previous used materials. Yeah, you could, there's a lot of sharing that could happen. And three is yes, you would still discuss your student progress. And four, you would make general suggestions based on what happened in the last two weeks. Um, mean, planning every three weeks would be, I think, even less effective. Okay. Okay, as a professor, this is what I did. I met virtually with Leslie once a week. I emailed her during the week. We shared materials such as books and handouts. And we shared, I shared my experiences in my classroom. I explained CCP practices and norms, norms being what is normal, what we do normally, usually, that were new to Leslie uh, because she was a newer colleague. And also I made a wonderful friend. And I, as the tutor, met with Joanna uh, once a week. We emailed back and forth uh, to just ascertain or determine the time. And we shared materials such as books and handouts and other insights that we found online regarding this important book. I shared my experiences with how things were going in the classroom in terms of how students were showing reading comprehension or writing and amount of writing and quality of writing. And of course, our friendship uh, started before this collaboration, but I believe the friendship was strengthened because just like parents taking care of children, uh, our students became so important to us that their success and failure was almost as important to us as if they were our own children. We are in loco parentis, as they would say. So now I wanna to talk to you a little bit about a case study. Imagine that you have a student from a country like Haiti, where the educational experiences are very limited because of what's going on politically in the country, economically in the country, uh, and even spiritual supports can be weak. So let's name this student, for example, Jonathan. This student, we still have this student. We're gonna call him Jonathan. He's 24 years old. At the time, he was an advanced intermediate student from where? Haiti. You know a lot about Haiti. It shares the same island with the Dominican Republic. It's been through a lot. It's been through weather disasters, earthquakes, and things like that. The, the national, um, I think the yearly income is probably like $1,000 a year. So students were reluctant. The student was reluctant to speak in class. What does that mean? He didn't really want to speak. How do we know? Because he didn't want to get up and work in groups. And he had his hoodie up the whole time, kind of slumped down a little bit. His work showed a lack of effort. And we were very concerned, worried, because he was in danger of failing the class. So. That doesn't jive with the learning lab philosophy because we say failure is not an option. Have you ever had a student like that? How would you approach a student like that? Any thoughts anybody has would be wonderful to hear from a student who doesn't want to speak and isn't working hard and we think he's going to fail. Hi, um, I just would approach them individually and talk to them and befriend them and make um, the classroom feel like a safe space and also try to pair him, in this case him, with someone else that he might like. Um, my cat is also 
<laughs> part of this discussion <laughs> and wants to share. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Violet. Both welcome. Thank you. For, thank you for your ideas, Francie. I mean, that's basically what we tried to do. So let me give you the overall data. If this were a qualitative, let's say, PhD research uh, project, what we ha we'd have to start to look at some numbers. So we had 12 students, 83% of the students came into the learning lab either before class or after class hours to do what? Improve their reading comprehension. Reinforce vocabulary, vocabulary, vocabulary development and revise, revise, revise their writing assignments. Concluding thoughts. What we wanna to say to you before we, in closing is that there is so much value in planning and making a reflective time to look at our lessons on a weekly basis if possible. Our students benefited by the time and effort that we spent in planning, 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 and reflecting on our lessons. How did we do at the end of every day? How did we do? So effective teaching requires thought, time, and collaboration in planning our lessons. These are our references. Uh, we'd like to ask you one question before we go to the Q&A. And we know that not all faculty will feel comfortable collaborating as intensely as we did. How would you feel about collaborating with another teacher in your department? or a tutor. We would love to hear from you, your thoughts, anything you wanna share with us would be greatly appreciated. Can I say something on? Please, please, Matt. Yeah. First of all, uh, I just wanna thank you for this uh, presentation. It's a very high quality, um, embedded in the best practices. Uh, it's, it's truly an inspirational work. I am I'm feeling so blessed to be a friend of yours and colleague of yours. Um, I've not had uh, attended such presentation in a long, long time. Uh, it's coming from the bottom to the top, starting from the real bottom to the top. And uh, yeah, each... And, and the best thing is uh, it has uh, reinforced my, my personal beliefs that each student is like a flower. And if you provide that student with the nutrients, that flower will grow up. So thank you, my friends. Uh, I, I have Professor Mirini on WhatsApp with me. Um, she, couldn't, she couldn't join uh, through Zoom. Uh, because of some problem with her computer. So she is there with me and she attended uh, the, your entire session. Uh, she is a, a head of the department of uh, Madagascar University, ENS. So uh, Mirini uh, would like to say something on the sharing model that we, are, uh, we have adopted. Mirini, would you like to say something? Yes, sure, Mac. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hello, students and colleagues. Can you can you hear me, Mac? Can you? Yes. 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 Can they hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, special greetings to Joanna and Leslie. Oh, welcome. This, uh, Thank you. Yeah, today and uh, hello to all the professors who are here. Um, Thank you so much for this great presentation. And uh, the title of the presentation is really relevant to uh, Mac and I, because uh, we are working collaboratively um, in uh, a few uh, subjects uh, about uh, TESOL in our department. Um, I would like to share about how uh, we uh, organized the uh, collaboration during this uh, last semester. Our semester began in, um, 
in, in July, July, and it uh, it has just ended this uh, it ended this week, and uh, during these uh, 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 twelve or uh, yeah twelve weeks, we um, organize the teaching in a way that um, uh, one of us. Uh, does the theoretical part of uh, the subject and the other one uh, does the practical part of uh, the subject. Um, since Mark is teaching virtually, he, um, he took part in the theoretical part. And since I am with the students uh, close to them and uh, physically present, I dealt with a practical part of the teaching. So uh, this was how um, we collaborated. We uh, often had uh, uh, conversations on WhatsApp. We exchanged a lot on WhatsApp, um, talking about uh, the requirements of the courses, uh, talking about uh, uh, how to grade uh, the assignments, uh, talking about uh, the duration of the courses and uh, all those sorts of things. And um, and if I may and, add, uh, what, what was... uh, sorry yeah. to interject, if I yeah. may add, we have a Saturday coffee hour. Uh, if you if, yes. if you are fine, can I share that also? <laughs> Okay, yes. okay. I have to get your permission. It's we we call yes, we call Saturday, yes, Saturday coffee hour. And in that hour, we discuss everything. We we discuss our student progress, we discuss our next targets, and we discuss uh anything that we want to teach each other, also, like uh uh Mirani telling me about the context of Madagascar and about the culture of Madagascar. And if I have something to teach her or share with her any anything, then I I so it's a it's a learning about a student body and it's a learning about our own teaching practices. And um, I we enjoy this Saturday every Saturday, uh, U.S. time uh, nine o'clock. Uh, we have yes. this. That sounds we, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Very productive. Yeah. Exciting. Thank you. I Thank want you. to be part of it. <laughs> Yeah, can we sign up? <laughs> Thanks yeah. very yeah. much for the presentation. Sure. Thank you for sharing, Melina. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. That was very helpful. Very open, and thank you for being vulnerable and sharing with us. The collaborating is um, it's wonderful. There's a lot of benefits. It does require finding the right person, like Mac and Merlena was just sharing. The right person, the right teaching philosophy, someone with the right schedule. And it's not, it's like magic. It's magic. It's not always going to happen. I have a question also to both of you. Please. Can you um, share some of the student responses when they were working with both of you, like uh, attending Joanna and working with Morris? How, how are how are they feeling? How are they taking the whole, uh, this new approach of learning where two professors are working with them? Can I just say one thing before you jump in, uh, Professor LaBeouf? Yes, please. I wasn't gonna jump in, but please go ahead. What I would say to them is as you cross the street from this classroom mm -hmm. to go to Professor LaBeouf, this is what I want you to be thinking about. Think about this question from the little prince, all right? And I would give them a big essential question and ask them to think about it as they're literally leaving my classroom and going into hers. So I'm trying to engage them body and soul. Wow, wow. Yeah, that was really collaboration. I mean, yeah, it's interesting because we were not like team teaching in the sense that we were not teaching in the same physical classroom, but the students knew like lesson class tutoring session uh, was required. So they, they knew that we were working together in a very intense way. And I believe they really appreciate that 
just just to sing Leslie's uh, praises for a minute. A different semester, I had to go away, and she was my substitute teacher, and she used a, a technique in my classroom called four corners, which they use more. Uh, it's very interactive. So there were four questions about the chapter the student read. And then in each four corners of the room with scotch tape, she put up the questions and the students in groups went from one corner to the next corner and discussed the question about the book that was taped on at the corner of the classroom. And they rotated every 15 minutes. So they went from one corner of the room to the next. So at the end, each group had, had discussed four questions. So I remember asking a student when I came back to, to teach, I said, how was the class with Professor Kirshner Morris? And the student said, amazing, <laughs> amazing. I'll never forget that. So that gives you a little idea of how what an amazing tutor and, and professor she is. My students were lucky to have her. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask um, this. Something, Nick? Yes, please. Um, well, uh, I just wanted to encourage the students to share their experiences about how they were taught by um, um, two different teachers for one subject, or um, how did they, um, what, what, how did they, yeah, how did they experience that? Because sometimes it may be a little bit, um, um, how to say that? It, it could be a little bit like confusing or um, a new, very new, because it's the first time that they've been taught by um, international teachers like Mac. So maybe Maybe they can share. So I encourage you students to share some of your experiences. Yes, we would love to hear from you. Please, students from the University of Madagascar. They're, they're shaking their head no. You could just if, say something a little. If you want, you could write something. In Last month, you all came, and you wrote, if you didn't want to speak, you wrote in the chat. I remember I was here. And you did a very part, you participated very well last month. So you could write in the chat. I already see one message in the chat. Um, let me read it. It's from Kanto. He was here last month. He said, thank you so much for this very interesting presentation. Um, so write in, in, in the chat. And also um, I would like to ask our colleague, Leslie Greenlee, if, if she would like to share since she is also a tutor in the lab and a professor. Yes, we would love to hear from you, Leslie Greenlee. Is she still there? That's on mute. Um. She might not realize that she's muted. That's okay. Uh, it looks like some students are speaking, but they're muted. Uh, Michelin, somebody got to unmute yourself. You, you guys are muted. Yes. <sighs> looks like Flo wants to say something. Flo, what were you thinking? Uh, so first, we would like to thank uh, Professor Khan uh, for the online uh, classes. And uh, as Mrs. Uh, Ramin Arfun, or as you know, Mrs. Mirani said, uh, they work collaboratively. Uh, Professor Khan is the, the, uh, the theoretical one, and we enjoy also the practical part with Mrs. Mirani. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. Thank you for sharing. It's wonderful to know. I think you're right. Leslie, is, Leslie, Professor Leslie Greenlee is back. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I was kind of off the main screen. I had to figure out how to get back. 
Okay, yeah, I really appreciate what Leslie and Joanna shared with me about how they uh, collaborated. I, I was really impressed. And I think that is extremely important for the progress of the student, um, you know, to understand both sides uh, of the issue. Um, I think in the future, I want to do that so it can have more of an appreciation of, um, you know, the issues that that student faces. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Leslie Greenland. Sure. Thank you, Professor. We so much appreciate your, your contribution to this presentation because you're like a sister to us and we know that the work that we do is kind of like it has a ripple effect. And when we get that information from you about whether or not the work is realistic or how we can cha change it or shift it, that helps us so much too in the way we plan in the future. Thank you. I just want to remind Mac of the time and see if he wants to close quite on time or, or what he wants to do now. Uh, Dr. Woodford, if you allow, I, I just want to invite the students again if they want to say anything on this presentation that they have attended today. Okay, somebody has written down. Oh, excellent. Nola, um, how do I say the name? Do you know, Mac? Nola Lan Lanya? Yeah. Say it again. Um, I'm not better than you, or to be honest with you. Uh, I kind of heard no la la na la na. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, la 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 Lola Lina. Lola Lina. Beautiful. Thank you so much for this inspiring presentation. Lola Lina wrote. I learned that every student is a flower. I enjoyed it. Every student is a flower. As somebody also, yeah. Yeah. From Irina. Irina. Mrs. And I don't know how to say her name. Uh, Mac, can you help me? Ramina. Yeah. Mirani. Okay. <laughs> and Professor Mac taught us things that were complementary. So when we did the practical part of the course, the theoretical approaches that Dr. Mack had taught us made sense. Yes, that's a really good point, Irina. May, may, I, may I add one more thing? Please. Yes, okay. Uh, I think that uh, uh, for me, um, it, it's also the first time to for me to to collaborate uh, in teaching uh, with uh, um, uh, a teacher from uh, an international teacher like Mac, as I said. And uh, the challenge for us, for both of us, was to set the standard, the standard of the course. I don't know if, uh, if you felt that, Mac, but yes. I personally felt that, like, up to which level of the content we need to um, are we going to agree on? Because the level of uh, the, the standard that Mac is used to having might not be the same as uh, the standard in my context. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. after the so, presentation, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So that was one challenge for me. Um, I, I know the context and the level of the students in Madagascar, um, which is new to Mac. And uh, sometimes uh, at the beginning, uh, we were a bit like a part in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the standard and the level. But then after, after some time, we could feel like uh, uh, this is then the the middle, I mean, we do not want to go down, we do not want to go too high. We had to find uh, the middle level. Yeah, thank you, Mirini. Yeah, thanks. Um, I would, uh, to, I'll be very honest and say that when I climbed Rupal Peak, it was 5,000 meters. But when I reached <laughs> 5,000 meters, I thought that I had summited everything. But to be honest, when I read 5,000, I saw K2 
which was 8,000 meters from 5,000. So today's presentation, Joanna and Leslie is 8,000 meters of collaboration. And I am at 5,000, I will learn a lot and copy lots of things that they have shown. Uh, the standards of exemplary collaboration, I am really, really impressed with this presentation. And I, I will follow lots of things from this. Well, would the students like to say anything else? Any last words? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's uh, Flo, Flo wanted to say there something. Is, there is a lot of things that, uh, that uh, yeah. I think that uh, should be taken into account in the next oh, uh, there part are, of the course, there is in a, the next semester. There is a hand up. Sorry, Aika. Yes. Yeah, I just want to, to thank you all for this wonderful presentation. It is such important for us, especially for, for students in Madagascar to have such um, presentation to improve our teaching skill. So thank you so much. And thank you for Mr. Mack for inviting us to this uh, presentation and um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. The microphone is open. You can see. Okay, all right. Um, yes, this is Francis. Um, we are so thankful for this um, helpful presentation because since we are going to be English teachers, um, we find it uh, very helpful to how to collaborate with other teachers in order to um, catch the, the objectives to improve um, the, the knowledge of our students and also um, uh, during or through collaboration, we share uh, techniques, methods, uh, one another among uh, teachers. So um, what I've learned is that um, you all professors, you do collaboration amongst you and you just make um, a great, great, great exemplary, exemplary to us. So of course we're going to follow that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That, that was that was so beautifully um, articulated. Thank you so much. Your English is amazing. Dr. Woodford is eleven seven. Shall we close the meeting? Yes. Oh, thank you everyone for joining. And once again, let's thank Professor Morris and Professor Labov for their ideas. Coming. It was a blast. Yes. Yeah. I have a wonderful week and month. And um, I, I won't be here next month, but I, I will come next time I can. So I, I can't wait for the next time I can come. <laughs> We will miss you next time when you're not. I'll miss here. you. Bye. Okay. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Leslie. Joanna. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.